Hi, pre-calculus. This is our uh, second video for trigonometry. This is still the first unit of trigonometry, and this is topic number two, and it's on special right triangles. Again, so a little bit of a geometry lesson, but like we said, trigonometry is the study of triangles. So we got to learn a lot about triangles, and specifically right triangles. So there are two types of special right triangles, and the first type of special right triangle is a 45, 45. 90 triangle. What that means is that you obviously have a 90 degree tri a 90 degree angle right here. You got to have a 90 degree angle for it to be a right triangle. And the other two angles are 45 degrees. Okay. Now, if you remember anything from geometry, there's something that we know. When the two other angles are the same, that means the sides across from them are the same. So um, obviously, in a 45-45 triangle or 45-45-90 triangle, it's an isosceles triangle where these two other sides here are the same. Okay, those are the two missing sides. So the idea is, how do we find the hypotenuse? So remember, we're we used to this formula right here, the Pythagorean theorem, and um, the hypotenuse is this missing side over here across the 90 degree angle. But both A and B are the same. So it's an isosceles triangle. So that's going to be x squared plus x squared equals c squared, and that gives us 2x squared equals c squared. And then to solve for c, we have to take the square root. And what happens is, since there's no addition, only multiplication, the square here will cancel, so that x comes out, but unfortunately the square root of 2 does not. So we get that the hypotenuse is the square root of 2 times the other side. So for example, if the if the two sides are the same or 5 and 5, then this side would be 5 radical 2. If the two sides were the same would be 9 and 9, then this would be 9 radical 2. If the two sides were both radical 3 and radical 3, this would be radical 6 because radical 6 or radical 3 times radical 2 would be radical 6. So the key thing that you have to remember is this formula right here where uh, the hypotenuse is equal to, um, to the side, the side that's the same on each, times radical 2. So we're going to use that formula in a couple examples here. So that's a really important formula right there, okay? So here's two examples we're going to look at. Uh, the first one right here, and here's the second one. In this first one, we know that one of the sides is 8. So that means this side is 8, obviously, and we're looking for the hypotenuse. So it's clear to identify what you're looking so for. So in this formula, this is that key formula I started for you guys to remember. Um, we're looking for C. We know X, that common side, is 8. So we get 8 radical 2 equals the hypotenuse. And just like that, we're done. That's how easy the problem could pot potentially be. This one over here is a little bit different because we actually know the hypotenuse. We're given what the hypotenuse is across that right angle. So again, I would start off with that formula. And again, always use this formula and you can't go wrong. All right, uh, this time I'm looking for the x value, that is these other two sides, and c is 7 radical 2. So to solve for x, I'm going to divide both sides by radical 2, and the radical 2's cancel here, and over here they're also going to cancel, and I get 7. So the missing sides are 7 and 7, and that makes the formula work. So those are obviously two very easy ones. Look at a couple more, a little bit more difficult ones. All right, here's uh, number 3 and number 4. and um, be very careful with number three. What's unique is that we're looking for the hypotenuse and we know the sides. So this side times the sides are 10 radicals. You say, well, I thought the radical 2 was always with the hypotenuse. No, the formula has it that way, but I never said that it had to. So again, always start off with this formula. And this is an easy one to remember. I'm starring it several times because you've got to know this formula. And you just fill in what you're given. I'm given that common side. I'm given that side that's doubled twice, right? So I know that this x value is that side, 10 radical 2 times radical 2 equals C, the hypotenuse. I'm looking for the hypotenuse. I don't know what that hypotenuse is. Question marks around that hypotenuse. So again, what is that? Well, <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, radical 2 times radical 2 is 2, so I get 10 times 2 is C. So the um, hypotenuse is nice, perfect 20. So it happens that way, but you use the formula. You can't go wrong. Here's another one where the hypotenuse is given to us. So don't worry about what needs to be radical and what doesn't. Just use the formula. X radical 2 equals C. So again, I'm filling in the blanks. I'm given the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is 9 radical 6, okay? And all I got to do is um, solve for 
uh, x here. So I'm going to divide both sides by radical 2 and I get x equals. Now how do I work this out? Well um, remember we do not like in math hopefully and we haven't done this yet so far this year this is a good time to start we don't like radicals down here so we're going to multiply top and bottom by radical 2 we do not like radicals in the denominator so on top that gives us 9 radical 12 all divided by 2 6 times 2 is 12 they're both in the square root but then 12 could be reduced remember 12 is 4 times 3 the 4 comes out as a 2, so that 2 and the 8 and the 9 make 18, so I get 18 radical 3, all divided by 2. 18 divided by 2 makes a 9, so I get 9 radical 3. So final answer there is 9 radical 3. Now, to be honest, I know that, that seemed kind of complicated and like, wait a minute, I had a lot of steps there. If you, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to say I made you do it the long way, but if you look back to the original problem, the radical 6 and radical 2, since they're both in a radical, you can divide them, only because they're both in radical jail. And 6 divided by 2 makes 3, so 9 radical 3. So those are about as tough as it gets, but don't forget, just use this formula right here, and you can't go wrong wrong just fill in what you know all right the second type of um, triangle that we're going to talk about is a uh, st st second type of special triangle is a 30 60 90 triangle okay so there's only two types of special triangles you have to worry about 45 45 90 30 60 90 all right in this triangle um, it's all based on the small side across from the 30 degrees that's the smallest side because this is 30, 60, 90, and the smallest side is always across from the smallest angle. So x is your smallest side, okay? The hypotenuse is equal to 2x. And the other side, the, the, the middle length side, I guess, is x times radical 3. So it all comes down to this value right here. Hypotenuse is double that value. And the long side, the long leg across from the 60 is x times radical 3. Okay? So again, um, you have to kind of remember some formulas here to get all this stuff straight. It can be a little bit confusing, but um, we'll try to, re I'll try to refer back to this triangle to help you out. So let's look at uh, these first two examples here. And um, this first one, uh, and here's the second one. Okay. In this first one here, we know that um, this is obviously 60 degrees right here. So across from the 30 is the guy that starts it all off, x. Okay. So the y right here would be double x. So I really don't need to think of y if you don't want to. Just think of twice x because this is what x was. So this side down here across the 60, remember, is always x times radical 3. Um, so x times radical 3 is that long side across from 60. So that means x radical 3 is equal to 4 radical 3 because that was the side that was given to me. Well, that's an easy value to figure out. Divide by radical 3, divide by radical 3. What do you know? They cancel, and x equals 4. That means this missing side right here is 4. And remember, this hypotenuse is always double that, which would be 8. Or if x is 4, 2 times 4 is 8. Okay? Let's check out this one right here. This is a little bit of a different one. Um, you know, I know I'm using x's and y's, but you can ignore them if you want and just think about the sides, right? Here's the 30. So the hypotenuse is 17. So you got to remember the hypotenuse, 17, is always half. I'm sorry, I take that back. The hypotenuse is um, 2x, and that is equal to the value that's across from the 30, right? Or it's double, I'm sorry, that's what x is, so it's double that. So if the hypotenuse is 17, then this value right here would have to be half of 17, right? So half of 17 would be 17 halves. Or because it's a terminating decimal, I'll let you use the, uh, the exact the terminating value there. 17 divided by 2 would be what? 8.5, right? Okay, so you can use 8.5. But I, to be honest with you, I'd rather you use 17 over 2. So again, then you got to remember that the side across from the, from the 60 is always that side times radical 3. So it would be 17 radical 2 times radical 3 for this side right here. So that was a kind of a tricky one because 17 was an odd number. But again, that's hypotenuse. The short side, the short leg is always half of that. Or you get the hypotenuse is double that value. So 17 halves and 17. And this is going to be at 17 halves times radical 3. All right, two more to go here. Sorry, I got to get them all messed up here. Um, two more to go. 
uh, for number three and number four for these particular 30, 60, 90s. All right, here we go again. Uh, this time the long leg is 15. Now that's the tricky one. Remember the long leg is x times radical 3. I'm telling you that that long leg that's x times radical 3 is 15 because look at the picture, it's 15. So I got to solve for x and again I'm going to I should, maybe I should have used X, I was just using S, or I shouldn't have done the X and the Y's in these pictures, but that's the short side. Across from the 30 degrees is the short side, the X. So again, X radical 3 is the long leg, which I'm giving to you is 15, so I got to divide by radical 3, divide by radical 3, and X equals 15 over radical 3, but remember, I don't like that radical in the denominator, so it's called rationalizing to get rid of it, and I get 15 radical 3 over 3 and then 15 divided by 3 is 5 so I get 5 radical 3 so this time the short leg is 5 radical 3 so things are a little bit weird than normal here but it does happen and then remember the hypotenuse is always double that short leg double it so double 5 uh, radical 3 times 2 would be 10 radical 3 okay so that's kind of a tricky one and number four here this last one the hypotenuse is 24 radical 21 very weird so again I'm gonna um cross out the x's and y's. Remember the short leg is always half the hypotenuse. So half the hypotenuse, that's easy to figure out, would be 12 radical 21. Just cut it in half. 24 divided by half is 12 and then 21, radical 21 stays there. So 12 radical 21. And then the long leg is always that value, the 12 radical 21, the short side, times radical 3. So I could do this. That's 21 times 3 is 63, I believe. So I get 12 radical 63. And again, because that's what the long leg is. Or that's the um, radical 3 times the short leg. So however, 63 could be reduced. I believe it's 9 times 7. So the 9 comes out of the 3. So I get 12 times 3 radical 7. But the 12 times 3 makes a 36. So I get 36 radical 7 for this long leg here. So that's kind of a uh, weird problem, but hey, that's how it works. That's how it happens. So um, be careful with those weird ones. There's um, two important triangles you got to be able to work with. We'll do tons of problems like this so you could practice. But again, you, you just got to get used to knowing how the sides are related to each other. And once you get used to that, it'll work out for you. All right, print check out. That's it for video number two over trigonometry.